Tonight, on a very special Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay is in Eagle Rock, California, where twins Jim and Jeff are fighting to keep the restaurant alive. Right from the very beginning, Gordon finds out he has double trouble on his hands. Oh my God. They're messy. Make sure they say a prayer before they start eating that. They're lazy. When was the last time this place was cleaned? What a mess. I hate cleaning. To me, that's a four-letter word. They're loud. You sure you don't like raw chicken? And they're emotional. It was that bad. And this all adds up to a recipe for disaster. Will you stop acting like a baby? Oh, blow it out your Excuse me? You heard it. Hey, my mother, need diaper changing. Shut up. Will Chef Ramsay be able to get through to Jim and Jeff? Right now, you're making yourself look stupid. Or is this set of twins beyond saving? It's a mistake. It's a lethal mistake. We can't serve them. You kill somebody. I screwed up. What do you want me to say now? Nestled in the middle of the up-and-coming neighborhood of Eagle Rock, California, is Capri, an Italian restaurant which is owned by the Thiel Twins. Hi, Hi. I'm Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> I'm Jeff. No, I'm Jeff. You're Jim. I'm Jim. And we're, we're the, the owners, owners of, of the Capri, Capri Italian, Italian restaurant. Good evening, Capri. Jim speaking. How we got into the restaurant business was we used to come here all the time, and we loved the place, so we would said, we'll buy it. The feeling was, it's like, dude, free pizza? All right. Yeah, yeah, word, word, uh-huh, Team Capri. <laughs> Twins are like two overgrown boys. <laughs> Jeffy's getting larger. <laughs> Let's play symbol. They're just kind of immature. Oh, I'll show you how you do the chicken fillet. Excuse me. They're just doing what they know, and it's not working. <laughs> Ta-da! Sorry. Are you OK? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it's OK. Yes, everybody is entertained by their childishness. But it is a restaurant, and we're here to serve food. That looks good. Oops. You know what? These guys can't cook. We gotta figure a better way to do the lasagna. We're getting too many people saying it's overcooked. Do you think we should cook it less? The food that comes out from the kitchen looks terrible. What do you say? It wasn't cooked, it's raw. Yeah, I win them all. It's embarrassing. It looks like nobody cares. You sure you don't like raw chicken? Dear, they're an issue. Jim and Jeff are lazy. All right, I'm going to the car. Wake me up when it's over. Lazy is an understatement. The twins' highest priority is doing as little work as possible. There's something that we're doing wrong, and I'm not sure what it is. But the financial situation hit the pooper. We're broke. <laughs> Oops, that pink is never a good color. I haven't paid them for a few months. We need help. If things don't change, I would say the doors will close quickly. Hello? No, the phone's not working again. Fingers crossed that Chef Ramsay's gonna help us. Italian dining since 1963. Closed since 1963. My God. Hideous. Oh, Hello. Hi there. How are you? Pretty good. I'm Jeff. Good to see you. Good to see you. Likewise. Uh, it looks shut from outside. Uh, yeah, we're not open yet. Are you not open yet? No. When do you open? Uh, Four o'clock. Dinner only? Yeah. And you're the uh, owner? Yeah, my Brilliant. brother and I are. OK, great. Would you like to meet my brother? Uh, yes, please. What's his name? Jim. Jim. And you're Jeff? Yep. Oh my god, look at this place. OK. What do you want me to do? Just say, hey, how's it going? Okay. You won't know. It's fun to play jokes on people. In the Twin Union book, you got to mess with people. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Jeff, is your brother not available? No, I'm Jim. No, no, come on. No, I'm his brother. You're kidding me. No, I am. Seriously. I am serious. Jeff, Jeff go and get Jim. Come on, don't listen. All right, all right. I've got Hold work on. to do. Hold on. Please. Hold on. Hold on. I'll get him. What is this, the comedy store? <laughs> Bloody hell, look at them. 
Are you kidding me? Come on, <laughs> guys. <laughs> Jeff and Jim. Yes. Correct. Jeez. Look at you two. <laughs> you are identical. <laughs> You're not dressing like this especially no, today. No, this we, is, we, we were this as this is for the rest. You've even got the same <laughs> sneakers on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pen there, pen there. I didn't even notice that. T-shirt there, T-shirt <laughs> there. I didn't notice bit that. Bit of flower there, bit of flower there. Yep. Yeah. Well, it's quite scary. Yeah, yeah. Jim? Yep. And Jeff? Yep. So who's in charge? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, basically I am. I worked here longer than he has. OK. Uh, what, since 1963? Come on. We oh, no, no, we no. bought it about 14 years ago. OK. So why aren't you open for lunch? The Capri's never open for lunch, which is good. I'd rather go on the computer, watch TV, play poker. The problem is, for lunch, we have to get another whole staff. Goof off, sit in the sun. <laughs> you haven't even tried it? No, I haven't. No, I'm not ready to jump into the lunch yet. OK, but you're open every day for dinner? Wednesday through Sunday. Say that again? Wednesday, Wednesday through, through Sunday. Sunday. What's wrong with Monday, Tuesday? So help me understand this. OK. Right. So you actually close longer than you open? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, thanks for updating me. I'm going to sit down and uh, eat. Please, oh, yeah. right over here. Thank you. Let me get you some water. I'll get the water. No, I'll get the water. Yeah. Jeez, seriously? Are these menus from 1963 as well? No, they're getting old. I know, we have to get. You're kidding me. But look at that. Is this a joke? No, it's not. You're kidding me. I can't me. believe they're, they're falling apart. You can't even read that. It's so dirty. First impressions. Wow. OK. Give me five minutes to have okay. a read of the menu. OK. okay. Yeah. And I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you guys later, yeah? OK. Holy crap. I don't know what Chef Ramsay expected, but it's not a she-she place. I'm not a she-she kind of guy. I'm more down to earth. Oh, hello, I'm how are you? I'm Colleen, I'm your server today. OK, nice to see you. Colleen, how long have you been here? Nine and a half years. A decade? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, what was the last thing we got changed in here? Oh, this is still the same way the original owners had it. Really? The wallpaper's been up there for 35 years. My god. Let's, uh, let's go through the menu, yeah? Let's start off with um, meatball sandwich. I love meatballs. Who makes them? They come from a company that we order from. <laughs> You're kidding me. No. You can't even make a meatball. I can. <laughs> OK, let's go for a meatball sandwich. And let's go for the chicken scapella. OK. Pizza. Ooh. Let's go for the uh, Capri Colossal. You want the big one? Yeah, why not? OK. OK, I'll let you put that order in. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. OK, what do we have to make? Chicken scarpello, meatball sandwich, extra large colasso. He wants an extra large? Jim, get me an extra large dough. What does he want? The colossal. All righty. So it's not just the menus. Oh, dear. Bits of sauce down there. Crap. Ugh. Just disgusting. Bits of <laughs> everywhere. There's tape on the carpet. Look at this place. When was the last time the place was cleaned? Not lately. How long has this stuff been here? 20 years. 20 years? Bloody hell. Oh, it's like it's snowing. Oh, oh my god. That's gross, no? Yes. That's, that's above people's. That's very, yes. Jim, two seconds, please. When was the last time this place was cleaned? Ah! Uh... Have you seen this? No, I did not. My goodness me. Who's responsible for the cleaning here? I'm responsible. I didn't do it. Have you seen the fans? I do not like to clean. I hate cleaning. To me, that's a four-letter word. So I'm about to start eating. I give that a little shake, and all of a sudden, the dust just runs down. Let me wash my hands before I start eating. What a mess. You want to microwave these meatballs, please? OK. Work with me. Jeez. Sandwich is ready. OK. A meatball yeah. sandwich. Meatball sandwich. Um. OK. And so they buy the meatballs, they defrost them, 
And then, has that been microwaved or...? Yes. Thank you. OK, what else do we have to make? Uh, Scarpello. That's nasty. When a restaurant can't even bother to make a meatball, that's not a good sign, let me tell you that. Somebody should tell him the chicken's definitely dead. Well, not again. What's the matter with these guys? Oh, my God. What in the hell is that? The Colasso pizza. Wow. I mean, it's like someone's cleared out the fridge. Look at it. It's endless. It has a little bit of everything except for anchovies. Oh, that's dreadful. OK, thank you. OK. The crap and the gunk on top of it is just hideous. He didn't like the pizza? He's not liking anything. Oops. Now we have the chicken scarapella. Oh. Wow. It looks dull. That's not right. Oof. It smells. Is that fresh? Um. Can you ask them how old the chicken is, please? Well, that was nasty. How old is the chicken? I don't know. When did we get it? Uh, I don't know. We took it out of the freezer Tell yesterday. It's 14 years old. We took it out of the freezer yesterday. It's frozen. It is not fresh because we can't afford to keep fresh meat here all the time because we don't serve that much. If he wants to donate money so I can make it fresh, no problem. But otherwise, tough. They're not open for lunch, but so far, what I've just experienced, they shouldn't be open for dinner either. He took out the freezer yesterday and doesn't. Remember when the delivery was. Excuse me. Oh, dear. Excuse me. I didn't think it was that bad. Ugh. Under the tables, it's littered with gum. Colleen. Yes? Look at that. It's everywhere. Ugh. Absolutely disgusting. How lazy some people can be. Let's go on a gumball rally. Oh, oh, God, under there, look. The size of the gum under that one. Oh, look at that one at the end. In the corner. Oh, my God, look at that one there. When was the last time the tables were cleaned? Not ever that I've known of underneath. They've never been cleaned underneath? No. Oh, my God. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eighteen. 19, 20 bits of gum. Every freaking table... Has gum underneath of it. Has gum underneath. We're gonna get out of there. No. Don't say that. Come on, stop crying. Grow up, you You. Uh, Jim, Jeff. Coming. I'm really nervous. Oh, dear. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. I'm afraid of what Chef Ramsay has to say. Honestly, you seem like nice guys, but that was painful. The general feel of the place is disgusting. I can tell how much you don't care. You're just standing there with your foot on the booth. Can you get your dirty feet off your own booths? Have a look at this. Every table is littered with stale, disgusting gum. We just, we never looked underneath the table. Didn't have the time? Busy for lunch? No. Open seven days a week? Not. The meatball sandwich? Disgusting. The chicken was turning. And then the colossal. Kate with crap. Were they canned mushrooms on top? Yeah. Canned olives? Mm-hmm. Soggy and tasteless. Where's the pride? I don't know. Come on, guys. It's like a joke. Find a pulse and get real. Before we open for dinner tonight, 
Would you mind wiping the lampshades? And can somebody get under the tables and get rid of that gum? Yeah, I'm going for lunch. I'll see you later. Starving. Capri, classic Italian. What a joke. He said our food sucked. And uh, that uh, our restaurant's really filthy. I think it was that bad. After sampling the horrendous food... That's not right. ...and discovering a dining room that hasn't been cleaned in quite some time... Oh, God, under there, look. Chef Ramsay has instructed the twins to clean up the restaurant before dinner service. You do the fans. I don't want to get on a ladder. Let's get Darian in here. I have a staff to do the cleaning. That's why I'm considered the boss and they are someone that works with me. <laughs> For me. Awesome. Get in here. Now. We don't have a lot of time. We have to turn everything over. We got an hour before we're supposed to open. After the staff takes over the cleaning of the dining room, Capri opens for dinner. Hello. Chicken scarf. Hello. And Chef Ramsay arrives. The door shakes. To see the twins in action. Have you ever seen a kitchen like this before? This place is littered with crap. What's that there? CO2 for the beer. Look at those shelves. I mean, that's grime. That's like 14 years of grime there. Chef Ramsay was that? Oh, there's dust here. There's this. It's just like, it's not that bad. What's in here, dare I? Vegetables. That's the vegetables. What's this at the bottom? Uh, that's supposed to be eggplant. Eggplant Parmesan. When were they cooked? Last Thursday. Last Thursday? God almighty. Look at that. Oh, feel that. Tomato sauce. Yeah, but feel it. I know it's. We just made it today. So what's it doing in the fridge? Hold we... that. I know it's hot. Hold it. What does hot things do that are sealed that goes inside a cold fridge? The sauce goes sour. I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Can I suggest you spend five minutes sorting out your first before you start cooking? Yeah. Okay. I should have known better. He's right, but he, he's just a pain in the ass about it. Darren, can you go through it real quick? Yeah. Trash. Thank you. With the rotten vegetables thrown away. I need to order wings, please. And the order's pouring in. Jim and Jeff get back to cooking. Darren, order green beans, please. Got it. And begin to send food out of the kitchen. Make sure they say a prayer before they start eating that. Hey, the chicken. I can't eat that. But the diners are less than impressed. It's so disgusting. I'm nauseous. The cut. They sent this back. They didn't like it? They said that they can't eat it. What was this? It was like a pile of mush. And a pile of mush. Big pile of mush. Is anyone tasting anything? Seasoning? Tasting? Every time a dish came back, it was like losing a customer, and uh, it hurts. What was wrong with it? It's too floury and not enough sauce. It makes me feel like a loser. I do really feel like a loser right now. Jeff, you OK? Oh, I'm just frustrated. Come on, let's get it. Huh? I'm, I'm working on it. Get outside, get some fresh air. Let's go. I got this one. What's the matter? Just, it was a failure. Just, you can't give up like that. I'm not trying to, just, it's not going right. I need to see what I've got to work with before I can start looking at any form of change. You have to bounce back. I'm, Huh? I'm working on it. I really am. Jeff, you've got to. Okay, come on. Okay. Let's go. Come on. Fuck okay. Let's go. Come okay. on. Mm. Chef Ramsey's right. You got to pull yourself together and get back in there and get through the night. How are we doing? We're doing well, sir. Thanks to Chef Ramsey's encouragement, Jeff jumps back into dinner service and tries to help his brother Jim get the kitchen back on track. Keep it up, Jim. You're doing a good job. 
but unfortunately, he only makes matters worse. Jim, what have we done to those? I don't know what happened to those. I, I, I really don't. You frosted them in the bag? I think they were defrosted in the bag, and I... Jeff. Yeah. The chicken tenders. What did you do to them to defrost them? I put it uh, on the steam table. You defrosted them in the steam table from frozen? Yeah. Oh, my God. Now what you're supposed to do. No. Frozen food needs to be defrosted naturally. Right. Give me the bag. Where's right. the bag? Oh, God almighty. We can't serve them. You'll kill somebody. Jim, talk to me. What am I supposed to say? It's a mistake. It's a lethal mistake. Why is it bitter? It's really bad. Is that what I ate lunchtime? Yeah. Oh, this is gross. It's gross. It's disgusting. I've been feeling a little bit crap all afternoon. What are you two doing? I f up. I f up. Well, what do you want me to say? I want you to step up to the plate and be a man. I screwed up. You haven't told anyone yet. He was just being a jerk. He was an ass. I'm so tired of him just pushing and pushing. Grow some f and take it off the menu. I've had enough. I'm so pissed. I can only take so much before I fight back. Jim, Jim, wait. Jim. It's an hour into dinner service. Oh, God almighty. And Chef Ramsay has just discovered a lethal mistake. Spoiled chicken at Capri. You kill somebody. What am I supposed to say? Take it off the menu. Jim, Jim, out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen, Due to certain circumstance, we have no chicken tonight. Oh. My apology to everyone here. If you just want to have what you're eating now and leave, I understand fully, and I apologize. Hey, there may have been a more subtle way of doing that. Get out of my way. When we canceled our chicken orders, we got screwed. Will you stop acting like a baby? Oh, blow it out, you Excuse me? You heard it. Hey, wait, wait, need diaper changing. I'll give Is you that time of night? Little poo-poo in caca pants. He's the baby. He's the one that's whining over everything. I don't need to hear this crap. Jim, why do you have to behave like this? I'm not going to get yelled at. You're walking at. around like a big baby, and I'm just asking you to grow up a little bit. Show a little bit of respect for what you're trying to cook. Uh, oh, my God, you big, wet noodle. Do you want a blanket and a bottle? Do you need one upside the head? Jim, stop oh it, Oh, my please. God. What a spoiled brat. Jim, shut up, please. You're not helping the cause. Oh, my God. Now he's setting himself on fire. I hope so. Are they always acting this childish? Oh, yeah. If they don't get their way, they cry. Or throw a temper tantrum. Oh, my gosh. To walk into the dining room like that and scream. That's why I said temper tantrum. There's a part of me that's very satisfied to see the boys finally get what they deserve. A lesson in humility. <laughs> OK, where are you at now? I don't know. I'm sorry, but yeah. it's really late. Let me go check on that for you. Can I pass you this? They've been here since we opened, and they haven't got their food yet. Jim, some of the tables have been waiting two hours out there. I know. We well, don't even seem to be bothered. I am bothered. Yeah, there's only three tables we served at entrees. Come on, guys, just show a little bit more enthusiasm, surely. No, it doesn't look good. Damn it. This can't be happening. It's just like a bad nightmare. Let's drink our wine and go. I'm out of here. Window wants to walk. Cancel window. Customers were not happy, so I got tired of waiting and left. It was very disappointing. I'm sorry, I'm not. It was a bad night. Our dishes took longer than usual. It was just an embarrassing night. OK, today could be summed up in one four-letter word, lazy. I can't even start to help both of you when you're not helping yourselves. I really need you to do something. Both of you, go through your kitchen and clean it. Not your staff, 
you. Both of you. Got it? Yep. Good night. Get to work. We weren't lazy. Now we're paying for it. We're failures. Yay. I'm just making a turkey here. I can't do this. What's wrong, Jim? I can't clean anything. I'm a failure. I'm making a mess. I feel bad. We are in trouble. I really don't know if we can fix it. That's the problem. I'm not cleaning anything up. Go take a break, Jim. Uh, uh, no, I can't take a break. Because I'm too lazy as it is. No, I'm fine. I gotta clean this up. No. I gotta clean it. After the twins spend most of the night cleaning, Chef Ramsay arrives early, and with the help of longtime waitress Colleen and pizza maker Darian, he does something the twins have never done, open for lunch. OK, Darren. Yes, sir. It's going to be fast. It's going to be furious, but you can do it, OK? Yeah, I'm game for this. How you doing? You should come in and have some lunch. I would like the lasagna, please. Pizza. Pizza. Lasagna up. Lasagna. Enjoy. This is delicious. Mmm. So yeah. It's really good. Oh, look at that. We got a sign twirler. Now open for lunch. <laughs> oh, cool. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, wow. I can't believe this is happening. Wow. This is our place. <laughs> All right, welcome. Hi. Thanks for making it today. Thank you. Uh, take a seat. Feeling a little bit peckish? Um, yeah. Yeah? Well, let me get you a nice little uh, chopped salad. This is different. Uh, let's start off with a little oh. chopped salad. Thank you. And make sure you save some room for an Italian sausage lasagna and a very simple um, margarita pizza. Thank you. I'm sorry, excuse me. It's a good pizza. I like it. Thank you. OK. Whilst you two were at home, nice and cosy, I got here early this morning with Darren and Colleen. I think today we put over $300 in the cash register. Wow. Yeah. $300. If you do that five times a week, that's $1,500. That's almost our rent. So it's a lot of money. Talk to me. I'm just <coughs> very happy. Yeah. I had my eyes shut. And that was wrong. I sat on my butt, being lazy. You can't have your butt stuck to your bed every morning. You've got to get out and, and break the mold. Message understood loud and clear? Yep, loud and clear. After finally getting through to the twins about their laziness, Chef Ramsay wants to dig a little deeper. He has an unorthodox plan that will allow the brothers to work out their issues and their frustrations. Time to let go of the past and to embrace the future. Gloves on. I'm not going to be fighting Chef Ramsay, am I? I want to know what's holding you back. One, two. Oh, for God's sake. What is that? Two. What is that? I don't work out. It's like starting an old car after a year sitting there. It's going to go fart out a little bit. <sighs> Oof. Come on, what pisses you off the most? What is it? Myself. Why? Huh? Because I'm lazy. When was the last time you did something 100%? I can't remember. What are you afraid of? Tell me. S screw it up. Damn it. S just screw it up. I've done it all my life. I'm a failure. You're not a failure. Yes, I am. You are not. <sighs> we all make mistakes in life. <laughs> Embrace change. Are you keen to make this business work? Yeah, it's time. I'm ready to move on to make a success out of this. OK, last 10. Let's go. And again. And again. Come on. Hit it. Stop kissing it. Come on. Come on. And again. Ready to change? Yes. Good man. Yeah. Get the 
out of it. I know I'm gonna put behind me all the uh, the laziness and look towards the future and the successes that are coming. Jeff, let's go. Good, good, nice. It feels good to just let out a whole bunch of that I've been hanging on to. Nice, nice, nice. Take a breather. Good. Wow. What does this restaurant mean for you? A life, a career. And you think by sitting on your lazy ass all day long and turning up, halfway through the day is going to make it work. You need to commit. OK. Good. You, in here. Let's go. I don't want any headshots. Just one round. And tell each other it's time to work. Let's go. We can work together. We can work together. And if we, we can be successful, we just got to talk to each other. Can I keep anything inside? Yeah. You know. No. Oh. Oh. Three, two, one. And stop. Well done. Give him a hug. Boxing each other uh, was a good exercise because it, it, it cleared the air and it showed me that I, it's time for me to work hard for the business for both of us. OK, good. It's time for change. Got it? Got it. Are you ready? Ready. Good. <sighs> Get cleaned up and meet me back at the restaurant. Satisfied that the twins are ready to make some changes within themselves. OK, how are you feeling? Good. good. Chef Ramsay okay. now wants to focus on something else that needs a major change, the food. When was the last time you made a meatball? Probably five years ago. Yeah, and w why did you stop? It was easier. Lazy. Oops. Let's make a meatball okay. Okay. together. It's been a long time since we made meatballs, but I'm ready to do this. I am a professional. Right, ground beef. Season, yeah? Salt and pepper. Garlic. Handful of chili flakes. Chef Ramsay is a magician in the kitchen. Oh, you just add this and this and this, and it's just like. Jeff. Yes. How big do you like your balls? <laughs> uh, pretty good size. I mean, you know. Golf full size. What? A little taste. What do you think? It's good. I like it a lot. Can you do that? Yes. Can you do that if it needs help? Yes. Homemade meatballs. Homemade yes. meatballs. The difference is night and day. Homemade! Homemade! Can't hear you! Homemade! homemade. Can't hear you! It's homemade meatballs! Get outside and shout in the street. Homemade meatballs! Tell them in the neighborhood! We have homemade meatballs! I can't hear you! We have homemade meatballs! Finally! Stop! We have homemade meatballs! We have homemade meatballs! Faced with a restaurant that hasn't been touched since 1963, Chef Ramsay and his team work overnight to give this restaurant one of the biggest makeovers in Kitchen Nightmares history. Right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You are in for a big shock. Are you ready to see the new Capri? Yes. yes. Good. On the count of three. One. Two. No peek. Oh, oh, oh my god. god! Wow. Oh my god. This is nice. <laughs> Just have a look. We have brought the Capri from 1963, fast forward it, transformed it to 2011. It's beautiful. Oh, look at it. Oh, cool hip. Man. This place is going to be hopping. This is nice. Oh, wow. Gone is the carpet that was stuck together with tape. You have the most amazing reclaimed wood. Lining the walls. Look at Yeah, that's oh. right. We had to put it on the wall as well. Colleen, oh. what do you think? It's Isn't it amazing? It's amazing. We got rid of those hideous green booths. You have the most amazing tailor-made cut pews as benches from your local church. Oh wow. wow. Sit down in the pew. You're happy. Yeah. Like a piggy. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Colleen. Yes, Come forward, darling, and bring those menus from the pocket there. Oh, I love my it. Gone are the dirty plastic menus. Look at it. Designed on what your kitchen is capable of producing. 
So now it's time to stop ignoring the business and run the business. Okay. Yeah? I get nervous when you don't talk. Oh, he's, huh? he's totally stunned. Come on. Just amazing. It really is. I've never heard you this quiet. I don't have anything What's the matter? Just amazing. I'm in shock. I never thought I could look so different. This is beyond what I could ever think could happen. It's amazing. Wow. We're moving up. And it's exciting. It's a second chance on life. This is going to be the coolest place in Eagle Rock now. Exactly that. Right, come through, please. Look at this. Oh, my uh, God. Let's start off with meatballs or forno, yes? What are they? Homemade, Homemade meatballs. Homemade meatballs. OK, salads to the table. Welcome. An Italian chopped salad. Yay! For me, the hallmark, the pizza. The margarita, classic. Eggplant, palm pie, delicious, and just gives a completely different twist. Now, entrees. Baked meat lasagna, one of my favourites, yeah? Mm. Baked herb chicken with fingerling potatoes and a white wine sauce. Jim? I like it. That's Jeff. A lot. It's cool. I'm Jeff. That's Jim. Yeah. <laughs> right, little taste? Yes. Jump yes. in. All right. Oh, the broccoli is so good. The food looks unbelievable, and it even tastes better. It's excellent. The eggplant is amazing. I'm starting to get full already, and I haven't tasted half the stuff. Excuse me. Welcome. Put you right over here, please. Word of Capri's relaunch has spread through Eagle Rock. We have a new menu. We have great salads and appetizers to start with. And the dining room fills up quickly with customers eager to try the new menu. You want to do the mac and cheese? The boneless chicken wing. I'll go grab that and come back to you. All right, let's go. There you go, Jim. Medium margarita pizza and a baked chicken. OK. And I, and I want you to call it out like a chef. OK. Owner. I got two. What is that? Hot potato skins. Two wings. Yes, sir. How are you doing, Jim? I'm nervous, but I have to believe that I am in charge and I know what I'm doing. Own it, own it, own it, own it, yeah? Come yeah. on. Gotta leave from the top, buddy. In spite of Jim's nerves. Table five is ready. Pick it up, please. Food is quickly making its way out to the diners. Not high enough. Perhaps a little too quickly. Listen, guys, guys, the chicken's not hot enough, especially inside there. Get in the oven, get the pan hot first. Jim, I think he's starting to really get a little panicky. Jim, give me time with the chicken, please. I, I, I got the, the chicken in, in the, what's in the pan and stuff. It's, it's heating up. Jim, bounce back. Yeah. It's not a race. Okay. Customers will wait for good food. Hot food out in the window. I'm dragging the meatballs. Here's spaghetti meatball. Yeah. Is that how I showed you to play a Spaghetti meatball. No. It looks like someone on my plate. Yeah, but Jim, it's like, come on. It's so easy, just on. And you're more capable of doing that, I'm telling you. It's not rocket science. You can't even great cheese. No, no, no. Stop panicking and yeah. focus. I'm panicking right now because we want to get food out quick. But it's like, hey, don't screw this up. It's an hour into service. Sausage. And Jim is struggling to keep up with the orders. Jim, how much longer on my table for? It's coming up right now. Unfortunately, a relaunch that had such promise. The appetizer meatballs. Did you really? I did not see that. Looks like it's slipping away. Your chicken's coming also. Jim, look at me. What table number is that for? 16 is there. You cutting it right now? I had a mushroom and a meat lover. Cut it right up. This is going to 16. They haven't even got their appetizers. Oh, sake. God darn it. Oh, come on. Come in, you. Come in, both of you. I need you for 30 seconds out of all this God. Oh, man, we're doing this again? I thought we got through this. Please don't let this be the end. No, no, no. No, 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 no. That. It's relaunch night at Capri. And with the kitchen backed up. Jim, give me a time with the chicken, please. The chicken in the, in the what's in the pan and stuff, it's it's heating up. And diners waiting over an hour for food. Come in, both of you. Chef Ramsay has no, seen no. enough. No. Look at me. Look at me. Right now, you're making yourselves look stupid. Right. It's a big night tonight. Yes. And you're pissing it up. Yes. So please listen to me. You have to command your kitchen. Yes. You have to work together. But yes. it's not a race. 
Right. Customers are going to wait for good food. Stop panicking and yes. focus, OK? Yes. Come on. Chef Ramsey was like, what the f is this? How could you? And I go, Ugh. We slip back into our old ways of doing it. And it's like, you got to change. This is a new Capri. I need to know what our garlic knots and pepperoni and cheese. Yes, sir. Let's go, Helton. I'll take care of this. Got it. It's time that I grew up. It's time that I start working as a man and not as a butthead. Sausage and bean, put some cheese uh, on this. I had to put basil on this, right? Yeah, put a little uh, oregano. Oregano. OK, Jim, good. Now we're getting a system. Convict it, yes? Yep. What's next? On uh, 16. Good. I got hot food up here. Please serve it. Once we started hitting our rhythm, it was great, because things were going out. Excuse me. We settled down, and we got it zooming along. How are we doing? So good. The meatballs are our favorite thing. Okay. This is really good. It's delicious. This is made from scratch. You can tell. This is so amazing. It's been one hell of a roller coaster ride, but we've learned a lot from Chef Ramsey, and he's left us with a lot of inspiration and hope. I can see that we will make it if we keep doing what we're doing. Jim, Jeff, you've come a long way. It's been a tough journey. Yes. And in order for this place to continue functioning, you both must work at it. Yes. Don't clutter. Yes. Show up early. Yes. Lazy is a four-letter word. Yes. Good. <laughs> God bless you both. <laughs> Thank you, sir. OK? Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good luck. We have went through a lot to get, uh, you know, to get the nightmare into a, a, a dream. It's yeah. still a learning process, but the future looks really good. The Capri is going to work. Good luck. <laughs> God, honestly, I'm never going to forget the twins in Eagle Rock. Let me tell you that. Thank you. Good night. Thank you very much. Jeez. Yes. <sighs> wow, that was hard. I mean, really hard. But I now really believe that both Jim and Jeff and their little restaurant can become a huge tourist attraction here in Eagle Rock. And come on, who doesn't love a pizza and a show? <laughs> oh. That was hard. Man. Just one month after Chef Ramsay's departure. Can I take a picture of you two with, with Jen? You sure, oh, sure can. The twins kept their promise and opened for lunch. It's excellent. It's really good. The new food and decor have made Capri a hotspot in Eagle Rock. Come back again. We're going to keep this going now. This has been a life changing experience. Thank you very much, Chef Ramsay, for what you did for us. I think it's going to work. It's going to work. By the way, we have homemade meatballs! Yeah! Tonight, on Kitchen Nightmares, Jeff Ramsey heads across the bayou to Zeke's, a famous neighborhood joint where the current owners have alienated the community. That's just terrible. Everybody here is just kind of waiting for the place to belly up. This husband and wife team seem to be only focused on the bottom line. Your passion's about portion control, measurements. You don't give a shit about food. They have neglected the menu. What the hell is that? And their loyal staff. We are talked down to like we're dirty. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. Tonight, Chef Ramsay faces the most deluded owners he's ever met. Russia don't run like this. Disagree. I disagree with that also. He confronts them with the cold hard truth. So how the fuck is that special in your tiny mind? When you start dealing with all this crap and your name's on that lease, then you tell me what you want to do. But will they change their ways? It's us against y'all. That is fucked up. Or will their stubbornness shut down Zeke's once and for all? You are not a fucking restaurateur. That's tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Located on the Mississippi River, not far from the Gulf of Mexico, is the New Orleans suburb of Metairie, a tight-knit community that is home to Zeke's, a neighborhood restaurant opened in 2002 by a charismatic entrepreneur named Zeke Ugnast. Zeke was six foot four, big and goofy, but you know what? The man knew how to have a good time, and he knew how to run a pretty good restaurant. Everyone came to Zeke's when it first opened because there was just a good vibe in this place. Good people, food was always good. 
I mean, we used to do 750 people in here on a Friday night. But in 2005, Zeke tragically died during Hurricane Katrina, and the ownership and the direction of the restaurant was up in the air. After Katrina, this place was in limbo. So the Cortellos bought it, and then they pretty much took on the place. Hi, guys. How are y'all tonight? Welcome to Zeke's. When we bought Zeke's, we chose to keep the name because Zeke's did a very good business, and that just made business sense to us. All right, guys. First guest. When Daryl first took over, pretty much changed everything. He cut staff. He cut product. He went to uh, lesser quality. Wouldn't feed that to your dog. And then on top of that, he raised the prices. It's an expensive. It's a little over the top. I feel as though I'm completely handcuffed in the kitchen. Dude, I'd love it, dude. I got steamed clams. That's not us. I don't think that's us. You know what I'm saying? I'm always trying to beg him or plea him. Can we try that? Can we do this? And Daryl doesn't allow it. I'm trying to make chicken salad out of chicken shit. I ask myself all the time, why do I even stay here? Uh-uh, no sitting on the job. Servers here are all talked down to or disrespected. People just don't feel appreciated. Daryl cut my pay in the last six months. I can't afford raises right now. Man, it's made me work more hours since he cut my pay. Daryl, we got three orders of green tomatoes left. Cutting them a little thick, too, I tell you that. I'm not looking to squeak by. I'm looking for financial rewards in this business. Yeah, short change, That kind of offended a lot of Zeke's regulars. And this has just steadily declined. Meatballs, plain and bland. Unless he's got a pot of gold stashed somewhere, there's no way this restaurant would last, you know, a month. All right. Payroll was today. How'd we do? <laughs> That's not a good question. Financially, we are not doing great. Well, we got to catch up somewhere. It's not happening. We're not going to make it if we don't have Chef Ramsey come in and tell us what he thinks we can do differently to change this. Because obviously, what we're doing, it's not really working. Physically, emotionally, it's been hard. I have put everything I can possibly put into Zeke's, but seats aren't full, so something's going on, and we're killing ourselves trying to find out. Before heading to Zeke's, Gordon has arranged to meet some Metairie locals to gain some insight into the restaurant and the neighborhood. Oh, doing good. How are we doing this morning? Very well, indeed, thank you. Morning. Morning. How are we? Now tell me about the area, Metre. What does it, uh, what does it stand for? So it's a town on the East Bank. Uh-huh. They got a lot of people. They got some good Russian sub there. And have you heard of a restaurant called Zeke's? We used to go there quite a bit. I haven't been there in a while, but before Katrina, we used to go there quite a bit. Before Katrina, we would go like every Friday, it was great. But after Katrina, we probably only went once or twice. What's the difference in food? We got pricey and average. Oh, really? Yeah. The quality has gone down quite a bit. Yeah. And uh, the atmosphere wasn't the same. They had lost the magic, the feel of the restaurant. Right, man, just changed. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. After hearing unfavorable reviews, Chef Ramsay heads over to Zeke's to continue his investigation. And there is nothing more telling than lunch. Hello. Well, hello, Chef Ramsay. How are you? Welcome to Zeke's. I'm, I'm very happy to be Patella. here. Nice to meet you. Definitely. Come right this way. All right, guys, I think we've got a special guest. Heard that. Heard that. Help me get up to speed. You are the owner. Yeah. You run the business with Zeke? My husband, no. My husband is Daryl. Daryl. And where is he? He is in the kitchen. So who's Zeke? Zeke was the original man who opened the restaurant, um, passed away right after Katrina. Daryl. And we purchased it from his estate. So we've had it for almost five years. What did you change after you bought it? The menu items are similar. OK, um, good. We've definitely taken some off and changed some recipes. And the chef is the same? Emil is the kitchen Emil. manager. Yes. Whose decision is it with the new dishes? It's My husband, Daryl. He's got a couple of his recipes on the menu. And where did he train as a chef? He's never trained as a chef. If you're not a chef, why would you put dishes on the menu? Being in the business, I guess. OK. Um, does the chef agree with those dishes, or is it just because he's the owner, that's why he gets them on? I guess talk to him about it. OK, let me have a look at the menu. OK. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Wow. Hello. Hi, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm well, I'm so thank happy you. to be in Louisiana. My first time. Good. Thank welcome. you. Your first name is? Candice. Candice. I saw on the menu the oyster... Oysters Cortello. It's an invented dish for our restaurant. The Cortellos is Daryl and Ellen, so they made they made it up. So the owners have named an oyster after them? Yes, they have. You bought the restaurant, now you want your name on the menu. Yes. Sounds like someone's struggling for power. <laughs> I've got to try one. OK. Yeah? 
and must have some boiled shrimp. Boiled shrimp. And what specials do you have, my darling? We have a chicken fried steak today. Let's go for it. We do have also traditional bread pudding. Let's go for that. And I think we're done. Okay. Thank you. Look what I got. All right, here we go. When Daryl got here, he kind of implemented his own menu. It really gets frustrating because Daryl really has no idea, culinary-wise, what he's doing. Candace, you ready? I'm going to take out the boiled shrimp to him. Chef Ramsay is going to love this food. It's simple food, it's basic food, it's feel-good food, but it's done very well and fresh. OK. Boiled mm. shrimp. Thanks, Tony. My first Louisiana shrimp. Yeah, everything's soft. They should peel easily and sort of pop out the shell, but I'm struggling to peel them. Mm. I mean, that is nasty. What I'm struggling for here is the lack of freshness. They feel and taste slightly mushy, which is a big disappointment. Candice, were the shrimps fresh? They're fresh frozen. They're fresh frozen. frozen. I know it's kind of an oxymoron. But you can buy fresh shrimp yes. within a mile from Yes, yes. The frozen shrimp tastes like shit. Sorry. Crap. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to know why we would get frozen shrimp when you can go to, like, the market and get them fresh every day. It's not uncommon to have frozen shrimp because some things are okay frozen. How we look on the oysters? Coming right now. All right. Wow, that back wall is hideous. What a mess. You got two seconds, please? Yes. And what's with the, uh, the swamp decor? <laughs> Whose idea was that? Um, mine and my husband's. To eat in a swamp? For children or for adults? For both. For both. For both. Oyster Cortello. That's not worth me. Right, here we go. Okay, thank you. All right. What the hell is that? These are the Oysters Cortello. Oysters Cortello. So I suppose you go like that. Wow, they're dreadful. Oysters named after the owner. I certainly wouldn't put my name on that. I wouldn't even put my enemy's name on that. Take it for you? Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you. That's depressing, isn't it? No. Just terrible. Oysters Cortello, I don't know what to say about that. I eat them myself. I think they're delicious. Absolutely delicious. Now, what do you say? Oysters Cortello just ain't working. This is killing me not to know what he's saying. This is the fried chicken steak, right? Correct. Thank you. You're welcome. Bland as anything. No seasoning, no care. Look at that. Ugh. Candice, what the hell is that? It looks like it's just had a giraffe's tongue cut out and deep fat fried. People complain that the quality of the food here is horrible. Unbelievable. Daryl's not listening to the feedback that he gets, and he's going to do what he wants to do. Daryl. Yep. He said that it looks like somebody cut out a giraffe's tongue, battered, and fried it. I'm not going to agree with that. It didn't look that way to me. I mean, that's what normally goes out. It's a good product. So it looked like we cut out a giraffe's tongue. Wow, wow, wow. Jesus. Thanks, Daryl. Doesn't look fantastic. But it tastes delicious. Who made that? Emil, it makes it. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just so happy that Chef Ramsay likes the bread pudding. It feels great to end on a good note. Love the bread pudding. You like the bread pudding? There we go. Loved it. I took full responsibility for bread pudding. That is all me. Daryl doesn't really have influence on that. Thank God. Thank God he likes something I did. I'll take that any day. Hello. Hello, Chef. And this is? Daryl Cortello. The owner. Yes, Chef. Introduce me to your uh, brigade. Chef Emil, Marcos. Emil, Emil good yes, to see you, buddy. Nice Likewise. to meet you. Likewise. Jason Carpenter. Jason, good to see you. Chef. There's a lot of things that, that need changing, and, and, you know, Daryl is, is one of them. Can I talk about lunch? Yes. My god, what a disaster. The food is below standard. Why wouldn't you buy fresh shrimp? I simply don't have the time to go to the market. Excuse me? Where are we? We're Come in New on. Orleans. Come on, big boy. Chicken fried steak. Disaster. What cut of meat was that? Not a very good cut. No. Are you proud to serve that food? No, sir. Was that the same quality of steak that we were using years ago? No, sir. Then why have you changed the standard? 
Um, it's, it's up to Daryl. Is that a cutting corner method to save no, money? No, no, or? no. Chef, everything is shit to you. Yeah. But we had diners eating all lunch, full dining room, but nothing <laughs> sent back. Do you honestly think, just because they don't send it back, that your food is fucking amazing? That's good enough for you to continue. No, you can't be that fucking stupid. Point taken. If they want to be that stupid, you've got no chance. I don't buy the fact that it's bad quality food. That's bullshit. Hard to believe this was once a great place. Coming up, while Daryl and Ellen continue to be defensive, we don't feel like it puts out an awful product. You don't give a shit about food. It's bullshit. The staff goes on the offensive. You talk to us like dirt. Then, at dinner service, Chef Ramsay makes a shocking discovery. So how the fuck is that special in your tiny mind? I don't have a tiny mind. I'm telling you I have a tiny mind. And makes an announcement that could mean the beginning of the end for Zeke's. How would you feel if I told you all that... After receiving some harsh words from Chef Ramsay... The food is below standard. Daryl has some words of his own. You know, Chef says everything is shit. It's embarrassing. There's nothing good about the menu. Uh, you know, I don't buy that shit. I will never believe the food is shit. You're not going to come I've been eating this food all my life. Chef Ramsay doesn't know world's food. That's it. I mean, you cut all the food down your wine. You can't break me. It's an hour before dinner service, and Chef Ramsay hopes a private meeting with the two chefs, Emil and Jason, can shed some light on the restaurant's main issues. OK. So, I don't get it. Some of the things I encountered there today were just awful. That can't be your wish to cook with frozen ingredients. We talk about it every day, and yep. it just gets swept under the table. I tell him the second he starts cutting the cost, you yeah. get a cheaper product. Yeah. You know it's going to taste like shit, and trying to explain that to him, yeah. just like, you know, is, is it's like talking to this wall right here. Yeah. And how long has it been going on like that? Since the right around the time he took over. The only thing Daryl and Ellen see is money, and that's what scares me. Their whole purpose is money, 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 money. We feel like our hands are so tied. As far as ordering goes, everything goes. The only other option was to leave. Me and him both go. Yes. Yeah. You know, what do you do? Just walk out the place? I mean, we got a lot of personal memories in this place, just to yeah. walk out of it. Granted, I, I get that, but it doesn't stop you from having your voice. Everybody here is just kind of waiting for the place to belly up and go find a new job somewhere else. I'm here to help put this freaking place back on the map. Yes, sir. You're absolutely right. Yes, we have only two options, Chef Ramsay or God, and I don't think the second coming's happening anytime soon. Thanks for the catch-up. Thank you. Thank you. After gaining some insight from Jason and Emil... Hey, I need shrimp portioned. Chef Ramsay is eager to see how this restaurant functions in a dinner service. Uh, how does this work? Uh, Emil. When were these done? Um, last night. Why are they bagged? He portioned them out to order. Ready? What's the idea of putting everything in bags? Portion so, size. Portion size. I like to have everything in quantitative perspective. If I give too much, you get a happy customer here. You don't get a good customer. They're happy because they're getting three times what they should be getting. I'm getting nothing. I don't make money on that. It's food. You know, we're not cutting uh, piping for bathrooms. Hi, welcome to Zeke's. How many do we have in the party? Four. It's Chef Ramsay's first time in Louisiana. Come right this way, please. And not surprisingly, Zeke's is completely booked. And tonight our special is lasagna. Can I lasagna something? I got a seafood platter, no oyster sub shrimp. I'm at the expo station. I like to see all the food go out. Side of new potatoes, Daryl. I uh, make sure every dish goes out like I want it to go out. Can I run anything? Nope. Shrimp platter. Can any of that go? I'm waiting on dishes to complete the order. It doesn't concern you that food's just dying in the window? Yeah, but we're pushing as hard as we can. Bloody hell. It's been here a long time. For expediting is one thing, standing here and saying nothing is another. Wow, fucking hell. It's an hour into dinner service, and the first wave of food is finally making its way out to the customers. Sorry about the wait. They are backed up. Everybody's food at the table now. Let me get uh, your server. My apologies. And the food isn't the only thing that's getting a chilly reception. Can I ask something? Do you mind not standing there like that? It's so dour. Yeah, I think you can be more proactive. I don't want to hover, you know. But you can make yourself busy. OK, I got it. I'm ready. Good. 
Thank you. All right, look what I got. What's that one? Lasagna. Lasagna. When was the lasagna made? Last Thursday. Last Thursday. And today's Thursday, right? Correct. Seven and stuff from a week ago. Help me to understand that, uh, that stupidity. Well, we made the, made the pan, we didn't sell it all. It's wrapped up in portions and it's frozen. I thought that's a bad thing. Lasagna, it's all done fresh and cooked. And uh, we'll wrap the portions up separately. We'll put them in the freezer. It works. It is the best lasagna you're going to get. Is this special, right? Yes, it is. OK, so how the fuck is that special in your tiny mind when it was cooked a week ago? I don't have a tiny mind. I'm telling you have a tiny mind. It can't be that special if you're going to stand here and tell me that this, it's special. The, the product is good. Daryl runs his kitchen with 90% bravado, and, you know, the other 10%, he just wings it. This is a good product. This is good food. Oh, man. My God. It's getting worse. Yeah, he's a tough nut, your uh, expediter. So we have a special today. When do you think that lasagna was made? Today. I made lasagna? Right. Last Thursday. How could it be that special when it's from a week ago? Well, you know, it's frozen, so it's not like sitting there getting mildew on it. And our customers absolutely the love the lasagna. I don't think that's our biggest issue, is lasagna. I mean, that's absolutely incorrect. What do you think they would feel like if you told them the day special was cooked a week ago, frozen? I don't know. I mean, I, I'm sure they would probably be surprised that it was so good and that it was made last week and frozen. Shall I ask them all? Would you like me to walk with you? I know I'm not going to walk, I'm going to stand up and shout. Oh, really? <laughs> when you come out to restaurants and you read today's specials, for instance, a beautiful homemade lasagna, would you expect that lasagna to be made today? Yes! yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, how many of you have ordered lasagna? How would you feel if I told you all that today's lasagna that's been served was made a week ago? This is humiliating. After making a shocking discovery about today's special... When was the lasagna made? Last Thursday. Chef Ramsay made an announcement. Today's lasagna that's been served was made a week ago. <laughs> that is not sitting well with customers. My apologies to those that have ordered the lasagna. Have a look at the potential other specials. Bon appetit. Thank you. Thank you. This is humiliating. It's absolutely better, of course, when it's fresh and it's served right out of the pan. But it's not horrible. I've just told the customers that today's lasagna was reheated from a week ago. The feedback was shock horror. 86 of lasagna. Yes, sir. Yeah. With Chef Ramsay's announcement fresh in their minds... Get a, uh, get a check. Get the check, OK. Customers have seemed to have lost their appetite. Fuck me. Did y'all eat already? <laughs> yeah, I had the lasagna. After witnessing a dinner service full of problems... You got two seconds, please? Yes, absolutely. Chef Ramsay is anxious to have a chat with the owners. Oh, dear. Did you hear? The customers tonight, when I told them lasagna was a week old, did you hear? Here's what happens. Cook lasagna, and it doesn't sell. Do you throw it away? No, we don't throw it away. We wrap it. I'm here to help, but I tell you what, I can't help you when you're standing there and trying to come up with excuses to why customers pay good money for frozen shit that cooked a week ago, and you call it a special. We don't feel like it puts out an awful product. You don't give a shit about food. That's not true. Your passion's about portion control, measurements, frozen foods, reheated in a microwave. Restaurants don't run like this. I disagree. I disagree with that also, definitely. Trust me, you are not a fucking restaurateur. You're the owner? You're paying rent here? When you start dealing with all this crap and your name's on that lease, then you tell me what you want to do. After being stonewalled by owners in denial... Morning. Good morning, sir. Chef Ramsay has called a staff meeting. Two minutes, please. Hoping to bring all of the restaurant's issues into the open. OK. I want you to tell me the frustrations, the anger, and 
the things that really upset you the most. Emil, um, I, I just feel as though I'm getting pounded with a mallet constantly when I walk into this place. I went from working 40 hours to working about 50 for $400 a week. That pisses me off. I feel that we don't get any respect. I'm here all the time. I don't get to eat lunch. I should have a meal. I should have a shift meal. This is messed up. We are talked down to like we're dirt. And it's not right. Listen, um, I really appreciate the openness and the honesty. I knew it was bad, but I didn't quite understand it. It hit that um, level of hurt. I think it's just sad that we're all sitting here and that we actually have to even beat at this point. I think we all, the whole group of us here, are pretty much struggling. No one's getting that message across. I need to get through to them. Daryl and Ellen are about to arrive. I want you to tell them. Everybody was saying what they wanted to say and getting it off their chest, but it's kind of different from telling Chef Ramsay versus telling Daryl. Don't be nervous. I don't want you to be afraid. I've got your back. Okay. And here they are. Good morning. Good morning. I've been here having a staff meeting. Um, we've gone through some issues um, this morning that's been bothering them. But rather than me trying to tell you how they feel, I think they should speak. Certainly. Who's going to go first? I go first. I don't feel as though we all gain much respect around here. And I don't think that you, as an owner, have our back. Candace, Ashley, is that how you feel? You really do talk to us like dirt sometimes. My intent is not to talk down to somebody. But that's how it comes out. Jason, talk to Daryl, please. My biggest problem that I have is just, I don't think you have a clue as to how this place runs. Me? Yeah. Wow. I think that you're so stuck on the numbers, the actual essence of having a restaurant and serving good food and giving customer service and happy employees, that, that's gone. I, I don't understand. We hear it every single night, and every single day, from our customers what needs to be changed and why they don't come back. We let you know these things, and you don't give a shit. Nothing is done. You don't care. Wow. Hey, this is ridiculous here. I really don't want to break down, because I've been here a long time. And I'm not getting paid jack shit. For somebody to be here that long. I've been here since 2006. Why haven't I never got a pay raise? OK, let me say something real quick. Since we're all telling the truth, First of all, Daryl and I have taken thousands and thousands of dollars out of our personal account to pay your paychecks. So why not just close the place down? We're not giving up. We don't want to give up. If you want to give up, that's fine. This isn't I'm your business. Giving. We don't want to leave each other because we all love each other. We don't want to leave. Not at all. But I need to make money to support my family. You know what? So do we. Y'all acting like it's us against y'all, and it's not. This is a business where we have costs and expenses. I ask you to take that pay cut. It's either that or labor costs get so high, I'm out. But you can go on five vacations in the summer. And you're struggling for money. Right. That is fucked up. Period. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. After Chef Ramsay arranged for the staff to air their grievances, I don't think you have a clue as to how this place runs. The defiant owners are not having any of it. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. If I were piling up money back there, then I could see you being pissed off. But we're not piling up money back there. I can't show appreciation in dollars at this point. 
They maybe have this picture of me with this pile of money going, ha, 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 nobody's going to get it. We don't have the money. I'm accepting the truth from you guys. Accept it from me, please. Things aren't going well, I understand that. But in terms of morale, there's an air of discontent. They feel abused. And I'm not saying the staff are perfect, but you're the owners, and you set an example. We have to fix what's broken within. So how about starting over again and turning the page and the beginning of a new chapter? I understand those frustrations. You are wonderful people. So I want you all here, and you will have my respect. I guarantee that from me. And there's a lot of love for you guys from Ellen and I, and I truly mean that. Good. We did make some progress. The air is clearer. OK, it's a new day here at Zeke's. I've got some ideas that I need to uh, put into place to really start putting this place back on the map. Thank you. Honestly, I don't think that Daryl and Ellen heard what, what we were saying. He was just saying what was right, just to get Chef Ramsay off of his back. We'll see what happens. Oh, Lord. After attempting to open Daryl and Ellen's eyes to the staff morale problems, Chef Ramsay has devised a plan to test the chefs and showcase their abilities. OK, it's been so obvious that you've been handcuffed by Daryl. And here's what I want you to do. Show Daryl how creative, how inspirational, how exciting you can be with seafood. There's a grocery store literally two miles away from here, OK? Have a look at the ingredients, get inspired, come back, get creative. I want to see that on a plate, yeah? Thank you, Chef. Good. Right now, I'm pretty jacked up. Gordon Ramsay himself said, Jason, time for you to be inspired. Go let it happen. Let's see what you got. All right, let's see what they got fresh. How may I help you? Redfish, Redfish. fresh. You just put it out an hour and a half ago. That's what we're looking for. Okay. It's extremely liberating to have this freedom to showcase and do what we want to do, cook good food. Right, Very nice to meet, nice to meet you. Thanks, guys. I am uh, looking for red onions with uh, asparagus. Just do a red pepper. This will be the last thing I get. I'm ready to rod. There it is. There it is. Showcase the skills. So, yeah. happy. Very Think happy. of something creative and really let it go, yeah? Yes. OK, off we go, guys, yeah? Yeah, I'm going to do a chicken fried steak at the same time, OK? Brilliant. Own it, yeah? Yes, sir. You can put a little lime juice in there? Yes. More yeah, lime just... juice. I'm not done yet with it. OK, good. Yeah, I love the idea. The bacon and cheddar. Grits. Cheddar. Nice. So in terms of the inspiration, tell me what it is. Try to keep it southern with the grits, fresh with the salmon, and classic with the capers, with the onions, with the tomatoes. Good. Keeping it with the New Orleans theme, red fish, and then grilled vegetables, fresh rice, fresh ingredients. You know, just a, a fun dish. Pretty good job. The difference is night and day, let me tell you that. Beautiful. Now, you say nothing. You didn't cook them. I cooked them. Do you understand? Yes. OK, let's go. Come over, guys. Please. Wow, look at that. You think of Louisiana, first thing you think of is freshness. But when I walked into your restaurant, what I didn't expect was frozen seafood. So I got my team to get some ingredients for me. It's like, you both just have a little taste. Taste the freshness. A beautiful child-grilled salmon done with grits. Creamy, tasty, it's absolutely phenomenal. Then I got hold of some uh, redfish, marinated zucchini with some rice and a really nice mango salsa. Mm. Oh, my gosh, this breadfish is delicious. It's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's phenomenal? Delicious. Absolutely. Yeah. Watching them eat my dish and not knowing that it was mine, and to say that, you know, it looked like it was from their heart. I'd like you to have a little taste of that chicken fried steak. I just lightly pounded it and then fried it twice. So it should just melt in your mouth. It does melt, yeah. literally. Literally melted, Jeff. And couldn't believe how good it was. The presentation was beautiful, and it was fresh yeah. ingredients, and they tasted wonderful. They're all absolutely phenomenal. And you can taste the difference. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. There's something you need to know about the seafood dishes. I didn't cook them. The two chefs put those dishes together. Wow. The seafood dishes mm -hmm. are your boys. Delicious. Absolutely. Wow. Phenom they really are. They're phenomenal. It really opened my eyes to what I, I, I wasn't letting them do, honestly. Food is art. And I was not letting them create their art. These aren't just delicious. They're beautiful, and they come from right inside you. I know that. You did a fantastic job. It feels really good that Daryl and Ellen recognize my potential, and I think that my abilities have been shown. And hopefully, this is the first step forward. This is the new Zeke's. I can see that's what we're looking for. And all I could really think to myself was, 
About fucking time you see it. Really good job. Well done. It's incredible. Coming up. Oh my gosh! It's the biggest restaurant redesign in the history of Kitchen Nightmares. This has surpassed anything I could possibly imagine. But it all could be for nothing if Daryl can't stick with Chef Ramsay's new plan. I'm gonna get three chops and alligator. Slow down for one minute. Let us get some. Everybody stop. Just stop. After finally having at least a small breakthrough with the owners, Chef Ramsay decides to have his team work through the night on the biggest restaurant makeover they have ever done. Right, good morning. Morning, Chef. Excited? Are you ready to see the Newsies? Yes. yes. Let's go. Welcome to the Newsies. Here we go. Oh, Come wow. in, please. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? In, in, oh. in. Oh, nice. Oh, oh man, that's my good. Gosh. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Oh, my God. Let's start with the walls. Gone is the swamp. Look at all the, the, all the old doors. Reclaimed doors. They've got that nostalgia, and it's got that comfort feel, right? Feel like home. Look at this. You've got the most amazing chairs, brand new chairs. It just feels authentic. Let me say this, please. please. You have found our identity. Wonderful. This is Wonderful. us. I'm astonished. I mean, truly. I didn't really have any expectations, but this has surpassed anything I could possibly imagine. There is one more thing I'd like to show you. <laughs> You're going to start peeing your pants. Oh, oh yeah. man, that's it. Oh, oh, that's it. There we are, our boil house. <gasps> oh, my god! From shucking your oysters to cooking your shrimp, this is going to be a substantial part of the menu. And a meal. It's going to take so much pressure off you and Jason. This should just run on its own, and it should almost double the turnover. Did I see you smile again? That's the second time in 24 hours. Uh -huh. Dude, huh? they're going to arrest you for being too happy. <laughs> Jeff Ramsey has given this staff, this place, my family, our friends, our customers, a new beginning. It's unbelievable. Honestly, when people would ask me where I work, I would never say Zeke's. I just say I'm a cook. Mm -hmm. Now I I'm, I'm proud to say that I work here. A new beginning and a new identity for Zeke's. Along with making the decor more inviting, Chef Ramsay has replaced Zeke's outdated, stale menu with a modern update of classic New Orleans cuisine. Oh, my gosh. My goodness me. This is going to put Zeke's back on the map. Smell it? Be careful. It's fresh. <laughs> Every dish is absolutely beautiful. OK, let's start off top of the table. Zeke's house boil, yes. Bucket of shrimps, yes. Bucket of blue crabs. A great sharing festive, localized bucket. Push them, OK? Back in the menu, the entrees. Pecan crusted catfish, served with a classic tartar sauce and a herb salad. Country fried steak, big hit. Say no more, such a gravy. Delicious, slightly heated in that gravy. So you've got that nice little burn at the back of your throat. Blackened alligator, wonderful Creole sauce. Absolutely delicious. Because this has now become not the old Zeke's, your Zeke's. Thank you. You've got your identity. Now make it yours. Absolutely incredible. Beautiful. Come here. Oh, thank you. Come here. The way Chef created the menu and the dishes, uh, they don't have a menu like that around here. Dig in. Enjoy. So not only do we have something great to put on the table, but it's not in the way around. Nobody else has it. Oh, Did you taste the cornbread? The menu is phenomenal. I'm right. proud to have it and excited and can't wait for everybody else to come in and try it. It's awesome. delicious. I feel right now we have the most diverse Louisiana Southern menu. I mean, we very well may have the best menu. Rich in flavor, rich in texture. Wow. Hi, guys. Welcome to Zeke's. The community of Metairie had a love affair with this restaurant that went sour. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Shrimps are amazing. Chef Ramsay's revamp and tonight's relaunch will be a strong indicator if it's possible for this love affair to resume. I'm going to try and smother it. I'm going to try the black and alligator. And with so many changes in place and so many people in the dining room, Chef Ramsay is hoping the boil house will take some of the pressure off the kitchen. Any, um, any orders on yet in the boil house? No. Nothing in the boil house already. So get hold of the waitresses, call them in and say, right, start pushing them. And we've got to use that place. We've got to get used to that. Let's go. Great. Sell boil food. I'm, I'm sell trying. one, okay? Sell one to a big table, please. Tonight we have a um, special. It's boiled lobster for two. I don't know if you saw it on the menu, but sell it by the bucket. Just bring us two to the camera right up. <laughs> two buckets of lobster for table five. Two, buckets, get of two buckets of lobster, please. Let's go. Put a little bit of butter on there. Give it a nice little glaze, okay? 
Good. That's it. Two lobsters. Let's go. Look what I have for y'all. Y'all enjoy. It looks good. Look at this. With the boil house now being utilized good. and satisfying customers, good. it's clearly allowed some breathing room for the kitchen. You're eight minutes on bay crab at 33. However, it's now up to Daryl to manage the time wisely. I worked hard today. Let's make it happen. You've got to focus on that window. Communicate with these guys. One table leaving, one table working, so we don't get bumped down, yes? Yes, Chef. I need an alligator. I need a strip. Give me three minutes on that. Let's go. We need to push food up there and cook it as fast as we can. Green tomatoes, charcoal ices. I need it fast. Let's work one at a time. It's not a race. How are we looking? Three chops and alligator. Hold on one second, Daryl. Smother chop. How are we looking? Daryl, slow down for one minute. Let us catch up, huh? Hey, fucking hell. Yeah. With Daryl calling multiple tickets at the same time. Grits, mash, sweet potatoes. And more focused on speed than anything else. What ticket is it for? The kitchen is now completely confused. How's my pecan catfish? Where's my New York strip? Gotta go. Just put them in the window and we'll figure out how to plate them. Yes, whatever you got. Make sure it's done, huh? I was being told that I need this, this, and this right now. And I just try and move as fast as I can and get the food out. See, it just looks like crap. Do you agree? Yeah. No garnish? No. Go in the window like that. Daryl has managed to get the cooks producing the food at a much quicker pace. Thank you. That looks really good. I don't think this is good. But the dishes are not at the level that they should be. So is that is that cooked? <laughs> it's not, is it? Excuse me. Can I get you another one, sir? Sure. Yeah. Guys, the fish is raw. Not tonight. Oh, just, man. just stop. Twenty-four is out. Everybody, stop. What a joke. It's relaunch night at Zeke's. Mother Chop, how are we looking? Daryl, slow down for one minute. Let us catch up, huh? And with Daryl pushing the cooks, food is leaving the kitchen quickly. Can I get you another one, stuff? Unfortunately, it's also coming back quickly. Guys, the fish is raw. Not tonight. Oh, man. Just stop. Everybody stop. I'm here. Jason, come around. I'd rather be three, four minutes later than rush food out there and the shit's coming back. Not tonight. An expediter should definitely set the tone for the rest of the kitchen. I think Daryl lost control of that. Uh, it's just a big catastrophe. What we've got to do is focus on one table at a time. We've got to communicate. Daryl, talk to me. Don't get smart. Where you at? Daryl, what table you on? Daryl, take responsibility. I have to stop, refocus. Let's get these tickets out one at a time. I need to do a better job of communicating, very simply. All right, guys, let's focus. Where you at now, Daryl? Pecan, catfish, and black and alligator. In his hand, Daryl. Table one. Let's go. Move to the next ticket. I got 33, black and alligator, pecan, catfish. Coming right now, Daryl. Let's go. Following Chef Ramsay's advice of focusing on one table at a time. What table are you right. on? Table 10, yeah, Maggie I got cheese, I got, is I, up. Daryl and the chefs are now in sync. Please, let's get this to uh, 31. Like an alligator. Awesome. Sure, Perfectly cooked dishes are leaving the kitchen. That's very good. And are being enjoyed by thrilled customers. That's delicious. Folks news are here. Now that this restaurant is on its way to a successful relaunch, Hi. Chef Ramsay is ready to spread the word. What happened with the restaurant before? Why did you come here? Uh, this place was legendary. Um, it lost its way. It's now back on the map. And two new owners that are going to start their own beginning of a new chapter. What is the feedback you're already getting for tonight? That the food is fantastic. I mean, the menu's it's fabulous. I highly recommend that you come in and try it. Let's finish. Let's finish. Somebody get this to 14, please. Yeah, no more tickets coming in. Let's get this stuff out of here. Well, definitely yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. That's delicious. delicious. That's a wrap, Jack. The end of the night, the way it ended made you feel good. I think Daryl showed more personality tonight than he showed in the last few years. We still have some improvements to make, but you can see it's on the right track. Nice job. Good night, ladies. Thank Good night. you. Thank you so much. OK. Tonight was about establishing a new Zeke's. And you achieved it. Yeah, yes, yes. For my first time in New Orleans, fuck me, did you give me a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> if Chef Ramsay told me a week ago that all these changes were going to happen... Why don't I, darling? I don't think I would have really believed it. Can I just have a quick word with you two? Amazing. Look at this place. The potential is huge. I know. Fantastic. It's now your Zeke's. Run with it. And Daryl, you do care. And you do have a heart, a big heart. Show it to your staff. Indeed I will. Don't, don't hide that. I'm ready to do things the right way. Ready to get moving. It's a new, it's a new life. 
It's new energy. Good job. Thank you. Thank good you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. We had a lot of issues here when I first arrived. The staff were at war with the owners, the food was miserable, and the restaurant was seriously struggling for an identity. But what I witnessed was a phenomenal comeback. And how fitting is that that it took place here in the most resilient city across America, New Orleans? We called lasagna not so special. In the weeks that followed, a glowing report on the local news. As a family, as a restaurant, it's back on the map. Brought a surge of customers to the restaurant. Hi, how are y'all? Daryl and Ellen are doing their best to raise staff morale. You all did an excellent job. I can't do this without you guys. And are reaching out to the community. And we really thank you all for coming. It means a lot to us. Thanks. But Zeke's back on the map.